hey, I'm here in my garage with my books. No, actually, I'm here <laughs> with uh, Dr. Scott. What's up? Oh, and we're gonna get on me for my again. Oh, that's okay. Damn them. Because uh, uh, <laughs> I wanted to talk. <laughs> <All right. laughs> okay, so so uh, we're on the for the swing catalyst plate here, and yeah. what did you notice with Vinny's swing that you were gonna try to work on? Uh, so one thing he was getting way too much into his trail side and producing way too much horizontal force, yeah. which was getting the club moving like eight, nine, ten to the right, hitting big hooks. Um, and so we worked on keeping his pressure shift more neutralized with our little force pedal deals here, which were good. So we're mm -hmm. getting his pressure shift pretty good. Still has a lot of horizontal force. Right. And so what we're trying to do now is teach him how to produce some rotation or torque, because that's going to drag the club around to the left a little more, hopefully, but we'll see. And so the way we produce, like if I want to push your left hip back that way, you have to push the ground towards me. And so we're using reactive neuromuscular training here to do that. So get in posture. Good, so get in normal golf posture, like pretend like you're gonna hit it. So like bend over a little bit, good. Okay, now turn back. Okay, now turn through. Okay, there you go. So feel what your foot had to do to do that. That's what we want to do. Got it. Okay, so turn back. Turn through. There you go. Nice, good. Pull a little harder there just to make them fail, study hard. <laughs> turn back, now turn through. Good, there you go. Back. Perfect. And so the, the push happens kind of early. This push happens early. And if I drop the band up, the pressure should then go to your heel after that. So Vinny's kind of like a, a slider a little bit on the downswing. And this is to get a more rotation. torque and rotation. Okay. Cool. Nice. Good. 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 All right. Okay, you can release that. And now hit a few with that feel. Let's just stick with the, the front. So when you take it away, try to crush that with your toe and then produce that force on the way down. See what happens. Good. What'd that feel like? Your hips it's just like really, spinning. Really aggressively like pushing off my, my right leg. Your right leg? Yeah, like this way. Okay. So like in, increase my... Your turn? Yeah, so it was like pressure in my calf. Okay. I mean, that's hit, just directionally, not yeah. Eight, so the club went back out, so we didn't really get it there. The club went back to where it was. So I think the ball might be sliding back in your stance. But we did get, if we look here. So Scott's switching between the foresight and the swing catalyst here, which get, is the uh, plate on the ground. To, yeah, yeah right. No, it's fine. So it's, if we go back to like one of your original swings, let's say, uh, back here. These are the graphs of horizontal torque and vertical force. So you see you had like 78 foot pounds of torque yeah. back then. And that last swing we had uh, 83. So you, you increased it for sure. Yeah, but we're still just still path. The path I think is because of the pressure, right? You're still, you watch here. Yeah, so back foot. Yeah, you're still 93 on the trail foot. So what I want you to do is crush that, pretend that thing's underneath your ball of your foot. Yeah. Do you mind if we put a, put this force pedal underneath his toe while you do that? Sure. And that way I can kind of see that force pedal getting squished as you're doing the rubber band. Vinny said like he felt it in his right leg. I think yeah. you want him to feel this yeah, it's more. It's more right. of a left leg push that way and yeah. then back. So. so yeah, put so put the ball ball of your foot on the on the force pedal there. So we should be able to see when he's doing that, that force pedal gets squished so out like posture, like so a slime. Yeah, there you go. Turn back and go through. There you go. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's good. Yeah, squeeze that thing. Let's see, let's see folks, as he's doing that. So do it and keep your heel on the ground, kind of tip. Yeah, love that. I think that'll change your, uh, your lower body mechanics a lot because your, your normal foot does that, right? Yeah, all that horizontal foot, so you turn through. So back and through. There you go. Good. Cool. And you actually want to try to like post up through that leg. So when you're doing it, you're kind of keeping some bend in it. So it should like straighten and post up through it as you do it. And like, yeah, good. And the, the like one of the biggest torque production moves is when people actually like jump off that foot and their foot is back here. So it's almost like you're, you're feeling that. Like what would you have to do if you wanted to jump your left foot back towards that box? Yeah, there you go. Okay, good. So give us kind of like a slow-mo practice feel swing of what you think you're going to do, Vinny. Yeah. 
Well, that looked good. Yeah. That looked so through the ball. Mmm, that looked good. How'd it feel, Vinny? A little bit thin, but definitely didn't feel my left leg on that one. I think that's good. Yeah, let's have a look, see what it told us. Actually, that was good. 5.1 path into out, so that was good. So Even from eight to five, that. right? Torque went down just a hair and the horizontal went up. So another feel that could help you, because we're giving you all like force feels, which yeah. some people aren't as good at. So another feel is um, on the way through as you do that, you want to take like the seam on your pants and like point it at the leaf leg back there. So it's really, it's this way. Yeah, exactly. Gotcha. Yeah. I gotcha. So now try that gotcha. feel. So this is more of a kinematic feel. Some people respond better to the kinematic than the kinetic type feels. What's up there, the four side or the swing cat? Uh, swing cat. You hit that miles. I went 193. But I went miles left. <laughs> <laughs> this is a seven? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Distance wise, that's the longest one I hit. Yeah, Which is directionally still pretty So far the far path far. was only 5.1, so it's like it's maybe just the face just got shut. Ooh, there we go. That was the most torque you've had. Oh, got it to 81. We're still too much pressure to that trail side. So basically, the, the, the pressure shift what it was before it was all the way up to like 92 sometimes. Yeah, that's still 87. So that's so. still pretty high. Yeah. And then we want, we want the, so let's overdo it, like, the torque higher. But like, I want to feel like you're almost doing that left for the drill. So like, yeah. stay on that left side, like crush that on the way back, and then uh, get that left hip pointed towards the box on the way through. I was up. I was up. <laughs> Losing the face, it must be. That's crazy. Like when you're trying to like completely stack yourself on the left side, you get 84% into the trail side. Let's narrow your stance up a hair. Okay. Instead of the wide end, let's go narrower. Yeah. Get the ball forward again, like way more forward than that. Ooh, that was better. Because wider it gives you more incentive to glide and push sideways. That one. Alright. I think narrower is going to be a winner. And then what I'm going to get you to do is try to flare your left foot a little bit at setup because that'll get you more rotational, hopefully. So a little left foot flare. There you go, a little narrower. Good. So we're going to crush that thing and then get that left hip pointed back. Our goal is to try to get that club to exit left. So we're liking the narrower stance, huh? I like the narrower stance. That was good speed too, 95.6. I think that last cue you gave him of exit left yeah. was good too. Good, five. Okay, so that, that helps the club path a lot. So just, Henry, flip this So you're gonna get in golf posture and put your hands together. So like get set up and put your hands together like this. And then drop your right hand slightly lower than your left, like it would be in a golf swing. Okay, then you're just going to turn to the right and let your right arm fold. You just kind of go halfway back. Okay. So this turns kind of inside the seam on your shirt. And so that means you should have a stronger right hand, which could quiet your face. That's what it does for me, actually. So put your normal grip on there. You might Goldie locks this one too here. Get a little more, a little less, and see what happens. Okay, so now turn your right hand to the right and tuck your elbow a little bit. Yeah, there you go. Okay, let's see what happens there. Still have a little draw. Let's see if that was the path though. That went further though. 193. 7 iron. Sometimes the face, it's hard to aim like inside too, so. Well, good. The path was good there. All right. Let's actually play like we're playing golf here. Um, you come back here. You're trying to hit it between the string and that like board on the thing there. Yep. So right in between that is your line. So line it up like pretend and then look at the 
target it like you're actually playing. And I like this and just strengthen the grip just a hair. So putting it all together, it's it's more narrow stance, yeah. stronger grip, yeah. and then his seam to the yeah, to the wall, torque. some more torque. Did that start where you wanted it to? I feel like it was at the at that board. Okay. You're hitting it further. That was right on the line, wasn't it? No, it was way left. Oh, uh, I'm watching the wrong ball. Yeah, yeah. I like that. That killed the horizontal force. And the pressure shift was way better. Pressure shift. That was really good. So what is what were we? What was the main thought that you had there on that last one? I think it was just shorter stance. Yeah. Grip change and just aggressively turn. Aggressively turn. Okay, that's good. I like it. Alright, let's just try. I mean, I don't want to overload the system here. We might have already overloaded the system, but set up to it. So just don't come away from this stick on your backswing. Just practice backswing and like don't let your hip do that. Turn as much as you can without letting your. Yeah, there you go. Does that feel a lot different? Yeah, it's like it's the stacking. Yeah. yeah. And it, it, it feels like stacking, but it's not even close to stacking because your your brain's calibrated around like 90%. Yeah. So turn as much as you can. There you go. Good. Try one more. All right. So I think I don't want to like overload everything, but I would say the best way to learn now when you go to the range to practice um, is to like. John Dunning and called it the Goldilocks, these things. So whatever it is that we did, do way more of it, do way less of it, and then do the middle and hit like three shots. And then go back, way more, way less, middle. And once you get the middle, you can hit like two or three in the middle, and then way more, way less, two, three in the middle. So Scott, for example, like stance. Yeah. Tell me like what would be way more, way less in so, the middle? You came in like this, right? And we probably moved you to here. And we kind of like that, right? Because that gets your path better. Yeah. So that I would hit one way wider than you originally did. Yeah. Way narrower than we did. And then where we were there. And then hit like two or three where we were there. And then go way wider and go way narrower. And see how's contact, how's ball flight, yeah. does it curve, all that kind of stuff in each position. And then for like hip torque, so you would hit one with like, you feel like your hips are doing nothing. Right. And you feel, hit one basically normal and then hit one where you're just yeah, totally. Try to be like facing the target before you hit it. Yeah, yeah, totally. yeah. And then um, what else? Did, some of the like, like pushing that left foot into the ground or I would do the right foot too. So like hit one where you're almost like this. Hit one where you like get way to the outside and then try to find one where that whole foot's in contact with the ground. So. I would play with when you go to the range of those things. And this is where like we're starting to learn that like hitting bad shots on purpose on the range is really good because then it calibrates your brain, right? Because if you get to like this and you hook it off the world, you're gonna be like, sweet, and I don't understand how I hook it off the world, right? <laughs> and then if you hook one off the world on the golf course, you're like, oh cool, I just did that. That's that's easy. Yeah. It's connecting feel and real. Yeah, totally. And then I would play with grip. So your normal grip where we were and then try to go super strong too and see which one does better and so like between now and like i'm away for like 10 days so like try that i don't know how many times you can get to the range one or two in 10 days maybe try that and then just take some notes and say hey i really like you know, maybe a little bit wider than we were here and i, I really like I actually don't really like strong i kind of like it weaker so then we can play with that yeah um and so like take some notes on that but i think that was some good stuff there and then hit some short shots too because the short shots were the ones that really were not good <laughs> and i can see how like a short shot if you get back here that's when you know could go all over the place yeah because on the shorter the shorter swing you just don't have as much time to to yeah. to drift and recenter and then with our uh with our PGA Tour data, like you don't see, like on a, I mean, we have a couple of players just hitting like punch kind of shots and like they never get into the trail side much. And if you're getting into trail side of that, it's just, there's not enough time to recover. And you're athletic enough to recover like on longer shots, but, yeah. but then with the driver, I imagine that you really get out of here because the more momentum. Of like I told you, it's right now it's worth all my back. Yeah, yeah, no, totally. So, and hit, so I would try, all those drills, I mean, with a bucket of balls, you could go through like the, whatever, was it four, three or four cues and hit like too much, just right, too little, maybe like three or four times through. So that's like 20 balls each. Yeah. 
and then do it with like a short club, do it with, do it with like a, I don't know, pitching wedge or maybe even shorter, like a gap wedge or something, and then do it with like seven iron and do it with a driver and then go home. And like, cause then every rep you have has a purpose versus just standing on the range and like, yeah. Cool, that's awesome, man. We'll, we'll let you much. get back to your baby and we'll, uh, <laughs>